Hello my pretties, it's the Lion Queen here. Welcome to episode 245 of Shadows and Pretties. Today I am going to be doing a movie from the 1980s and this one came out in 1987. Most of you guys probably have remembered a lot of movies from 1980s were pretty good as well as the 90s. Well I mean most of them we have seen as kids on VHS and some of us, if we were even lucky enough, even saw it in theaters. So, I thought today we would do a movie review on a Alvin and the Chipmunks movie, and this is the animated movie that I'm going to be, well, doing, because, well, why not? Because, you know, I've been kind of deciding to, you know, do a movie based on Alvin and the Chipmunks since I hadn't done it yet, that topic yet, so I thought, you know what? Let me go give this one a, a shot. So today, I'm going to be reviewing the Chipmunk movie, or the Chip, well, the Chipmunk Adventure. This movie came out in 19, um, 1987, so this one is basically a musical animated comedy film based on the Saturday morning cartoon series of Alvin the Chipmunks, to which I'll be reviewing them sometime in the future. I don't exactly know when that will be, but I will try and do a review on that in the near future if I ever do get the chance to it. So, anyways, with that being said and that being the case, um, this is pretty much um, directed by Janice Cardman man, and um, written by Carman and Ross, Ross Bay Hagedarishan Jr. And, yeah, this is basically following the chipmunks and the chip pets, which most of you guys probably know who the most likely know who they are. They go in this hot air balloon and race around the world as cover for a diamond smuggling the ring. It's a pretty interesting movie and I personally really thought it was a really good movie. I mean it's an older movie. Yes, and I mean this movie's like really old and most of us remember watching the Alvin and the Chipmunks um series as a kid and so I thought, you know what? It's pretty good for a non-Disney movie, I'm not going to lie. It's pretty good for a non-Disney movie. And of course, this was um, pretty much intentionally, it was, re it was scheduled for Christmas of 1986, but however, it opened on May 22nd of 1987. So anyways, I guess with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, get started with this... Um, review and I will be pretty much I am going to be saying right now I'm going to be pretty much spoiling every single um well parts of this movie but most of you guys probably remember watching the Alvin and the Chipmunks um cartoon tune as a kid I mean I remember watching the cartoons when I was a kid so if there's ever I will be trying to see if I could find time to review the live action movies I don't know when that will be though because I only saw from the first one all the way to Chipwrecked but I've not seen the fourth one, so yeah. I'm probably going to skip reviewing the fourth one until I see it. At least for me, that is. Because I like the live-action movies, but I think the cartoon one did a lot better job, in my eyes. So, yeah. And anyways, um, I remember watching the um, cartoon of Alvin the Chipmunks like when I was a kid. So, yeah. This movie does um, pretty good um, con and does have a good concept. And it's a pretty good um, movie, and I recommend you guys check, take a look at it if you haven't. Um, so, basically, the plot of it is about when their guardian, Steve Savell, goes to Europe on a business. Tr on business. The chipmunks, Alvin, Simon, and Fedor, are left home in Los Angeles with their babysitter, Miss Miller. Later, the chipmunks and the chip pets, Brittany, Jeanette, and Eleanor, played the arcade game Around the World in 30 Days, and Alvin and Brittany argue over which would win the actual race around the world. They're overheard by the international diamond smuggling siblings, Claudia and Klaus Ferguson, who have, have $5 million worth of diamonds to distribute the, to the buyers with no couriers who are known for their nemesis. So Jamal, Jamal Claudia then tricks the children into unwilting the mules, mules offering and arrange a real race around the world between the chipmunks and chipettes for a $100,000 prize. So to participate, Alvin sends a, records a phone call to Dave and edits a trick Miss Miller 
into believing that Dave wants the chipmunks to mate him in Europe. So the two teams are set off in the hot air balloon, each given a different route, $12 made in their likeliness, which is they are like to exchange the designated locations for the dolls in an alike of the other team to confirm that they were visited by the locations. Unbeknownst to them that the dolls are filled with diamonds and those are confirmed receiving the contained cash. The Ferguson's butler Mario is secretly an informant for Jamal who dispatches two of his men who acquire the dolls. So the chipmunks first stop is in Mexico City where they join in in a fiesta in Bergamanda the Chupets at scuba dives to make their first exchange, and Brittany is almost eaten by a shark. So, the teams continue their journeys, exchanging dolls to various countries along the way. Jamal's men trailed, tail them, but they failed to get the dolls due to various mishaps. So, the teams across the Athens, where they try to outperform one of their musical numbers at Acropo- Acropolis, and are almost spotted by Dave. So, frustrated by his man's failures, Jamal insists the young aide of Ski, Ahiv, I mean Skeev, I think that's how you pronounce it, it's it, who has the mercenaries to capture the Chipettes in Giza, which happens to be in the third largest city in Egypt. And rather than return them over to Jamal, the prince desires instead to marry Brittany and gives her a baby penguin. So, the girls perform a song to charm the cobras, guarding their dolls, and escape to their balloon alone and detour to Antarctica to return the baby penguin to its family. After learning they have the, the, the activated the, from their route, Claudia sends her thugs after them, but the girls eventually escape, but discover the diamonds and cash inside the dolls, realizing that they have been deceived and they set out to find the boys. So, meanwhile, the chipmunks are taking a shortcut through the jungle, where they are captured by a naive tribe who named Theodore their prince of plen- plenty and forced Alvin and Simon to be his slave, their slaves. So soon after that was learned and to be sacrificed by being dropped into a pit of crocodiles by performing the song Wooly Bully to certain na- natives, if they stall their execution and they get rescued by the chip pets. So Claudia discovers Mario passing through information to, to Jamal, who is revealed to be an interpol de- inspector. The children land at Los Angeles International Ampo- Airport at the same time Dave's are turning the flight and they are get chased by the fur changers who get them to surrender by falsely saying that they have kidnapped Miss Miller. Dave sees them being taken away by the fur- in the fortune's car and joins Jamal in pursuit. Miss Miller is absolutely driving in the wrong way, in the one-way street only to pick up her Dave, and accidentally runs the fortunes off the road. They get arrested by Jamal, and the children are reunited with Dave, and Elvin and Brittany argue over who won the race, much to the adults' frustration, and thus how the movie ends. So this one was a pretty good movie. I honestly really thought it was a good movie for Alvin and the Chipmunks, especially something that came out in the 80s. I mean, I know it's one of the late 80s and early 90s feel to it because of how well made it is. And I definitely got to say it's a pretty good um movie for what this is. It's got very good voice acting. It's got um very good um acting. And it's just pretty good. Like, I like the acting. I like the... um you know, the voices, I mean, the voice acting did pretty good job, and the whole concept of it seemed pretty well made in detail, especially with, I like how, you know, it's made in awesome detail, I mean, it's honestly pretty fabulous to see a lot of these movies, so, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, this part of the, these parts in the movie, they did have, you know, it tugs on our heartstrings, if you got to be honest, because there was a few parts of the movie that kind of got me really emotional, especially when the baby penguins, you know, lost its mother, you know, it's been, you know, lost by its mother, although it's pretty upsetting because, you know, if I'd be missing my mom if I was been taken away from her or whatever, it'd be very depressing because of how, um, amazing these um 
these movies have been. And, I mean, a lot of these movies like to pull on our heartstrings. Like, so many of them, like, so much movies. I mean, especially in the 90s and even in the 80s, they really tugged on our heartstrings. Like, take a look at Land Before Time, you know, the part where Littlefoot's mother dies. That was depressing. Take a look at, you know, Simba losing his dad. You know, all those deaths that have been done in Disney and non-Disney films and even certain emotional parts in the movie, they just love to tug on our heartstrings just to get us to understand what they're going through. So, of course, since this movie was the part of the, you know, the 1983 series of the same time, he was hired to work on the film, which was pretty surprising. So, yeah, it's a pretty good um, concept for it. So, however, though, there is one deleted scene where the chipmunks go to Russia, although some storyboards and animatics were released in on the 2006 issue, which I don't know why that scene was cut off, but it was cut off for whatever reason. So anyways, um, when we see one of the songs in this movie called My Mother, is it involves the chip pets explaining, you know, why their, um, why their mother, you know, wasn't, their real mother wasn't really there for them. And then honestly, that's like really, that part of the movie just got me really emotional because, you know, you got to feel bad for, you know, the fact that, you know, the baby penguin doesn't have his, is not with his parents and the chip hats are trying to look after him. So you could really understand, you know, how it feels to, you know, be away from your family and that. And honestly, it's pretty depressing well, I still like the animation of the movie. I thought it was um, pretty well made in detail with, with the characters acting in character. And I mean, I like the idea of them um, going, you know, to different places, having a race and stuff. So I could definitely say that it's definitely a really well made story, especially with, you know, it's really well made and drawn. I mean, the characters look absolutely amazing, especially with the concept of the movie, of what it's about. I mean, I personally thought this movie was funny at parts. Yeah, it did have some emotional parts in the movie, but I still found it to be, you know, pretty good in my own opinion. And, I mean, a lot of us probably have seen this on VHS tape. Like, I think I saw it on VHS tape. Like, back when I was a kid, I did watch it on VHS. And, I mean, it was a pretty good movie. And I do like how the movie does pull its heartstrings and parts here and there. But other than that, it, it was still a well-made movie, especially from the 80s. Like, I mean, we're talking about the 1980s, like the late, like mid-late 1980s. Like these movies, I mean, it's pretty awesome that we got, you know, certain characters for villains and concepts for these um movies it's honestly pretty well made it's pretty it honestly when I watched this as a kid I honestly really loved it although it did make me emotional but when I watched this for the second time like when I watched this a lot as a kid I got emotional but when I watched you know this movie as an adult you know it hits me differently and it's pretty much kind of like the same thing it kind of pretty much is like what happened or something. So, in all due reality, I mean, when you watch these, you know, kids' movies, as much as, you know, you did when you were little and even when you were, you know, an adult, it's still a pretty good movie the, to say that, you know, lots of these movies do have great concepts and they do have well-made details of, you know, what this movie is. And, I mean, there's a lot of other movies that have, you know, similar concepts. And the animation and the way the characters were drawn are so well made in detail. Just like with the first, um, just like with the other movies, like um, Lamp Before Time and that. You really do have a feeling that, you know, these movies really, really do have, you know, tendency to, you know, pug, tug on our heartstrings. You know, make us feel emotional and feel how, you know, the characters are feeling. I mean, there are funny parts of this movie, but it's also still a pretty good movie. And I recommend it for anybody, you know, who, you know, has kids or and all that. 
I recommend you guys all watch this movie if you're an adult or whatever. Because even if you haven't seen it in a while, I highly recommend you check out this movie for the second time. Even if as an adult or whatever. Because I watched this movie for the first time the other day as an adult. Like in the first time in years. And it honestly still pulls on my heartstrings when I was watching it as a kid. From when I was a kid, it got me really emotional. But it still, he'll, he'll pretty, it still really hits me in the heart. You know, that, you know, all the issues that, you know, the chipmunks and chip pets went through. And honestly, it still really hurts to see this to this day. Although it's still, it's still pretty amazing how, you know, you know, non-Disney films can do, you know, pull on your heartstrings just as much as Disney film does. Like, I know a lot, most Disney films like to do that, like, pull in our heartstrings and, you know, put emotional parts in it just to get us to feel, you know, all like we're going to cry in that. Non-Disney films like this one, as w well as um, other films, like I think Wacko's, um, you know, Wish was one of them. I don't remember much from Wacko's Wish, but I do remember, you know that it did get me emotional at certain parts, although I haven't watched the movie in, like, years, so I'm gonna have to rewatch the movie whenever I feel like I have the time for it. Now, with that being said, and that being the case, I'm gonna say right now that this is just simply my own personal opinion on this movie, and if you happen to disagree with me, that's perfectly fine, too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these movies, and this is just my own personal thoughts. I give this movie a um, 10 out of 10. Although it's a very emotional movie, I still personally thought it was really good. It's still a pretty well-made um, movie for what it is. And, I mean, it's still a pretty... It's a pretty cute movie at parts of it because I found it to be cute at parts. And there's parts of it that made me, you know, emotional. But other than that, it's still a really well-made movie. And I still... I recommend anybody who hasn't seen the movie in years or need or like a refresher, I recommend you watch this movie. And even for those who are considering on showing it, their kids, you know, a kid's movie, I highly recommend you check this movie out. So, like I said before, it's emotional at parts, yes, but it, like especially with the baby penguin, those parts mainly, you know, got me really emotional because of how you know, depressing some of the parts of the movie are, but it's still a really good movie for anybody, especially for those who haven't, you know, watched the movie in years or whatever, because this is, I haven't watched the movie in, like, when I was a kid, I remember how emotional it did get me, and I think it got a couple other people who watched the movie, most of you guys probably got emotional if you watched this. Well, I guess that's all I can really say because I don't really have anything much to say now. So I'm going to sit here and say, what do you guys think of this movie? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Leave me what your thoughts are down in the comments below because I personally like to hear what you guys think. Now, as for the Elvin and the Chipmunks live action movies such as the first um, three, I like the first one, the Squeakquel and the, and the Chip Chipwrecked. I will be considering looking into those again. I'll have to, you know, rewatch them again, the live action ones again, so I can consider, you know, reviewing them again. And as for the, um, and as for the fourth live action movie, I don't know when I will be getting to that one because I haven't watched that one in like, a, I have not seen it, so I can't really say until I, you know, seen it for myself. But anyways, with that being said. Leave me what your thoughts are in this movie in the comments below. And as always, I'm the Lion Queen. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you're new to my channel, feel free to leave this video a like. Comment and subscribe if you're new. And feel free to leave me what you guys think. Ring the bell for notifications to when I upload. So that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, I'll be seeing you all in the next video. Peace out. And like always, I'll see you all next time.